let's speak next this morning to Heather Burns, who's policy manager, Open Rights Group Scotland, a digital campaigning organisation protecting privacy and free speech rights. Morning, Heather. Good morning, Stephen. Are vaccine passports the way to unlock Scotland? Well, there's certainly a lot of issues we need to consider before we get there. The first and foremost is that um, a vaccine passport just tells you whether or not you've had the jab. You may still be able to communicate and transmit the virus. It's just a binary yes or no. It's not a signal of health. So with that in mind, we now need to consider what are these passports for and how are they going to be used? We absolutely cannot use them as an excuse for normalizing a sort of mass surveillance, mass databasing of who has what, who hasn't had what, where have they been, what shops have they gone to, what travel are they doing. And we don't want to create, as, as you and your, your previous caller said, a sort of two-tier caste system where certain people have special rights and privileges, even though they may well still be communicable, while people who either can't have the vaccine or choose not to or are still waiting their turn in the queue, people like myself, uh, have to sit at home all summer and watch everyone else having all the fun. But we need as many people as possible to get this vaccine, Heather. Isn't this a really simple way of encouraging people, a reward, basically, for getting the vaccine? Well, that could be good and that could be bad. You use the example of the Reading and Leeds Festival. Again, what happens if you can't go in to the Reading and Leeds Festival because you haven't had your passport or your, your vaccine jab yet, or maybe you don't want to? That's a disincentivization. And we certainly almost don't want to see these vaccine passports becoming gamified. I can certainly envision these sort of nightmare scenarios of, you know, vaccine-only trading cars and vaccine-only cinemas. And that's going to be a very ugly look for us as a sort of stratified country. Is there a compromise here, Heather, which could be Mm -hmm. that you either need to have um, a negative COVID test to show or you have to have... Uh, a vaccination certificate. There is some way we could get round this which would allow those people who do think this is a good idea and governments seem to be coming round to it and individuals who have reservations to still be able to access services. Well, the way we're going to make that possible is by looking at what sort of safeguards and guardrails we, either as Scotland or the UK as a whole, are going to put in place around people who have had the vaccine and want to use a vaccine passport. Because we've been living under time-bound legislative constraints and restrictions on our civil liberties for over a year. What we need to be doing now, if we are moving in the direction of vaccine passports, is shift that dialogue to what sort of time-bound protections and safeguards on our civil on our civil liberties we're going to have. Now, last year, when the the vaccine or the, the coronavirus first started up, there was a proposed piece of legislation called the Coronavirus Safeguards Bill, which was largely drafted by a, a prominent Scottish internet law academic, Lillian Edwards, and it would have set forth those sort of safeguards and provisions on our civil liberties for the use of any sort of electronic or offline coronavirus status apps, whether that was your test to trace or the eventual vaccination app. And it was things like there should be no sanctions for failing to own or carry a vaccine passport. There needs to be a full data protection impact assessment done on this. We need to ask the questions about, is this ethical? Is this legal? What sort of legal safeguards do we have to protect the people who have these? There shouldn't be gamification. We shouldn't be sort of turning into a a two-tier system. We need to respect people's right to privacy, regardless of their vaccine status. We need to think in terms of oversight, you know. If Uh, A vaccine passport is going to become mandatory to enter a restaurant. Who's providing the guidance to that restaurant? Who's providing the oversight on how that restaurant treats treats people? Who receives and acts on complaints when the restaurant gets a little big-headed and starts kicking people out because they haven't had their jab yet? Who's accountable? You know, who is going to be ultimately accountable for the system and the classifications we're going to create with vaccine passports? Now, that bill for political reasons, went nowhere. But if we are going to be moving towards vaccine passports, I strongly think that both the Scottish and the UK Parliament are going to need to look into reviving these bills, reviving these frameworks, and putting in some sort of legal protections around them. I I get what you're saying, because the risk, presumably, Heather, is that if government does not provide this framework, I mean, we're already seeing some companies 
down south saying no jab, no job for you. Mm -hmm. It's a condition of employment. And we may just see this starting to develop, uh, you know, perhaps a cinema chain says you Mm -hmm. don't get in here without it. So it's an informal system rather than a a formal system. Doesn't that really put the emphasis on government playing a role in this to provide the kind of safeguards you're talking about? I think we can all imagine some sort of business owner getting a little big headed or a little bit nasty about that. It's going to be so important for us to think in terms of what's the sort of society we want to be. We don't want to normalize mass surveillance. We don't want to normalize mass databases of people's status. And we don't want to normalize a two-tier system. And I feel like that slippery slope could happen very fast unless we get together as a society and talk about what sort of post-COVID society we want to be. For the moment, thanks for your time, Heather. Heather Burns is Policy Manager at Open Rights Group Scotland, a digital campaigning organisation working to protect privacy and free speech rights.